this is a simple pendulum experiment. Uh, we just have a string. It's the same string we've used in other experiments in this lab. At the bottom of the string is a weight hanger. It has a mass of about 50 grams. And we've already measured the mass per unit length of the string. It's relatively negligible compared to the mass of the weight hanger. And it's clamped at the top so that it's free to oscillate back and forth. And that small motion you see now is a simple pendulum that's controlled by the mass and length of the string. So I'm just going to pull it back a little bit and let it swing with a small amplitude. You can count the number of swings and the duration to find out how many swings per second there are. That's the frequency of the pendulum. A complete swing back and forth. What's the frequency of that vibrating or oscillating pendulum? We're going to change some parameters and see how that alters the frequency. We can change the length of the string and we can change the mass on the strings. The first thing I'll do is just add some mass and we'll see what happens. So I've added 150 gram mass to the weight hanger and now I'll just pull it back and we'll let it vibrate. Now there are two 50 gram masses on the white hanger. And again, I'll just pull it back and watch what happens compared to one or none. How does that frequency differ from the ones you've seen before? I'm going to add one more. So now we have three 50 gram masses. Let's do that again. And then we'll add another. Now, how long is that pendulum? So we just measure the bottom of the mass hanger and the place where it's clamped up here at the top with this two meter stick. And you can see it's just about 120 centimeters. That accounts the length of the solid piece down here and the length of the string together and it's clamped right there on the inside of that clamp. So 120. Centimeters is a pretty good measure of the length of the string. So now with the mass is the same, I'm just going to change the length of the string. Same mass. I've just shortened the string by pulling it through the clamp up here and carrying the excess string back off the other side. I'll pull the weights to one side. And you can measure the frequency of that vibration. We'll need to know how long that string is, too. So again, with the same two meter stick, you can get it without bumping into the ceiling here. Measured in the same way, that string is 84 centimeters long. Now with an even shorter string, we'll do it again. I'll pull it back. 
you can measure the frequency by counting how many swings in a given time. So you can see the time on the video replay or just measure it yourself with a, a clock. It's pretty clear it's moving faster than it was before. And then again, we're going to have to measure the length of that string. So it's a little harder now because I'm going to bump into the ceiling up here. So we'll just measure both ends and take the difference. I'll put the clamp point at 80. And at the bottom, I see 27. So we have 80 less 27 centimeters for the length of the pendulum that you just measured. Now we've shortened it one more time. And I'll just give it a nudge. We'll watch it oscillate. And then we'll measure the length of that one too. Same way. Stop it. I'll put this up at 80. And the bottom here is at 46 and a half. So 80 less 46 and a half is the length of the pendulum that you just saw. Let's also try one more thing while we have it here. I'll start it, watch it, watch it vibrate. And now keep that in mind. And I'm just going to take two weights off. Has it changed? I'll put the weights back on. Some food for thought there. This is a different kind of oscillator. There are two springy pieces of steel here. They're stiff in the vertical direction, so they'll hold the load out here pretty well. But they're very flexible this way. And then when they're displaced, because of the spring constant of that steel, it will vibrate like that. So watch it carefully. I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see it better, and we want to find out what the frequency of vibration is with no mass loaded on this platform. Then we're going to put some mass on here and see what happens. So let's zoom in so you can see it a little better. And I'll just move it to one side and you watch it for a few seconds. Count the number of vibrations and the duration, find out how many vibrations per second we have there. They dampen out after a while, you can see it gets lower and lower amplitude, but you can still see it move. Now I'm going to add 100 grams. We'll do it again. Add another hundred grams. What's happening? Let's add a hundred more. So the simple pendulum, you add the mass and it might not change very much. But for this one, what happens? That's 400 grams. Here's 500. Six hundred.
700. Eight hundred. Nine hundred. And it makes a whole kilogram. So here we are again with no mass. And here's a mass you don't know. I'm just going to drop it in a hole. It sort of makes it a little easier to hold it in place. So the question you might ask yourself is, what is it that's determining the frequency of this oscillation? With no mass, it's pretty fast. If I put the mass on the carrier, it's slow. This particular mass is conveniently has a string on it. And I want to see what happens if I just let the weight of the mass hang on the carrier, but the mass itself is not being moved as it oscillates. So let's do this. I'll just feed this string back up through this hole like that and loop it over a few times so that it will hang in place. And now I'm just very lightly holding the string there so it won't go through, but let's, let's see what happens. Look at that. The mass is hanging on the carrier, the same weight vertically downward on it, but the carrier oscillates as if the mass is not on it at all. So what is it that determines the frequency of the oscillation? That's the purpose of this experiment.